You must find Philadelphia much changed. There was more change than I could have imagined, Mr. Hamilton. Not the city itself. All cities swallow everything in their way. That's no surprise to me. That's why I abhor them. But I've been, as you know, in revolutionary France, where the streets are filled with the songs of liberty and brotherhood and the overthrow of ancient tyrannies of Europe, and to return from there to this our cradle of revolution and find the dinner table chatter is all of money and banks and authority is an unwelcome surprise. Unwelcome, perhaps, but necessary. I must admit, Mr. Hamilton, I uh, a little uncertain <laughs> as to the purpose of the Treasury Department. <laughs> No doubt its function will reveal itself to me in good time. The future prosperity of this nation rests chiefly in trade. Trade depends, among other things, on the willingness of other nations to lend us money. And how would you propose to establish international credit? Our first step would be to incur a national debt. The greater the debt, the greater the credit. And to that end, I have recommended to the President that Congress adopt all the debts incurred by the individual states during the war through a national bank. The idea being that if the states owe Congress money, then other nations will feel more inclined to lend it to us. If the states are indebted to a central authority, it increases the power of the central government. You have it exactly. The greater the government's responsibility, the greater its authority. Mm. The moneyed interest in this country is all in the north, so the wealth and power would inevitably be concentrated there in a federal government, to the expense of the south. If that is the case, it is unavoidable if the union is to be preserved. I fear our revolution will have been in vain if a Virginia farmer is to be held in hock to a New York stock jobber, who in turn is in hock to a London banker. <laughs> the opportunities for uh, avarice and corruption would certainly prove irresistible. Well, there you have it, as I have heard said. If men were angels, then no government would be necessary. <laughs> <laughs> well, sadly, that is very well said. Uh, but. There can be no question. Our nation cannot bind together without powerful central government. But we must also accommodate the needs of our constituent states, both North and South. Now, the power of one must check and balance the other. Uh, and to that end, we must dedicate all of our energies and our care. I would like to welcome Mr. Jefferson home. Mr. Secretary of State. Yeah, here. Yeah. Mr. President, gentlemen. There are cabinet matters that I would like to discuss. If you would excuse us, Mr. Adams. Please convey my regards to your wife. Gentlemen. John. Mr. President. 